Hello, my name is Dr. Armodius Hatsidakis. I'm a fellowship-trained orthopedic surgeon at Western Orthopedics, and I specialize in treating conditions and injuries at the shoulder and elbow. In this video, I will be discussing rotator cuff tears and the available treatment options. The rotator cuff is comprised of four muscles with tendons that surround the shoulder ball and holds it in the shoulder socket, which makes up the shoulder joint. The names of the rotator cuff tendons are the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, which is in the back, teres minor, the last tendon and muscle in the back, and subscapularis, which is the large tendon and muscle in the front. Their primary function is to center the humeral ball in the shoulder socket and provide power to the shoulder. A rotator cuff tear occurs when one of those tendons pulls off the bone itself. It can occur with daily life activities, age, as well as sporting activities or accidents. Symptoms associated with a rotator cuff tear include pain deep in the shoulder and upper arm, pain with shoulder activity, and inability to perform overhead activities because of weakness. Shoulder pain can sometimes radiate to the elbow and often disturbs sleep. Sporting and fitness activities are often disrupted, secondary to weakness and pain. Starting at one end of the spectrum, more conservative measures that can help patients feel better are physical therapy to strengthen the surrounding muscles, anti-inflammatory medications, pain medications, and cortisone injections. These measures won't fix the rotator cuff tendon tear, but can improve pain and ability to perform everyday activities. One disadvantage of the conservative approach is that the rotator cuff tear can get larger over time, making the tear harder to repair and decreasing the likelihood of healing after repair. For tears that are significant or that are problematic, we often recommend rotator cuff repair. In this surgery, we actually stitch or sew the tendon back to the bone, usually through minimally invasive arthroscopic techniques. Arthroscopic means using a thin camera and instruments to perform the surgery with small incisions. Occasionally, a longer incision or open approach is required to repair the tear. Small anchors are placed into the bone and sutures that are attached to the anchors are used to repair the tendon back to the bone. Arthroscopic surgery is a great option for rotator cuff repairs because it's minimally invasive. It doesn't attach any muscles. The incisions are small. The infection rate is extremely low. The quality of the repair is just as good as, and sometimes better than, with traditional open surgery. Usually the shoulder feels better faster. These are some of the advantages of arthroscopic rotator cuff repair surgery. In some cases, the tear is so old and so severe that it cannot be repaired back to the bone. In many cases, home exercises and occasional pain medic medicine or injections can keep the shoulder pain-free and functional enough to avoid surgery. However, many patients with an extensive rotator cuff tear cannot lift their arm at all, even for activities of daily living, such as dressing, eating, and reaching a shelf. The reason for this is that the ball of the shoulder has lost its centering mechanism due to the extensive rotator cuff tear. Oftentimes, the severe of a tear is accompanied by arthritis of the shoulder, destruction of the cartilage. In this situation, conservative treatment methods are often not enough. In the last 10 years, a new form of replacement, the reverse shoulder replacement, has provided substantial improvement for irreparable rotator cuff tears. In a reversed shoulder, a ball is fixed to the native shoulder socket. A socket is placed on the native ball side. This is how the replacement comes together. This replacement takes care of the bone-on-bone -bone pain and provides a stable center for rotation. This form of replacement is a great option for patients because it usually improves patients' pain and gives them back their function. The most important preparation for rotator cuff surgery is to maximize flexibility of the shoulder. A stiff shoulder before surgery becomes even stiffer after surgery. We can provide you with exercises before surgery that you can do to maximize your shoulder's range of motion before surgery. It's also important to avoid strenuous lifting before surgery, as a torn rotator cuff is more susceptible to tearing off the bone more, potentially making the surgery and rehabilitation more extensive. After surgery for rotator cuff tears, a sling with a pillow pad on the side of the waist is used for about six weeks. Gentle passive range of motion exercises of the shoulder are initiated nearly immediately after the surgery. During the first six weeks, the tendon is healing, but it only reaches 30% of normal strength at the end of the six weeks. 
Animal biomechanical studies show that maximal tensile strength, or the amount of healing that takes place, reaches 80% at about six months after the repair. Often patients feel fully healed at this time, but usually the rotator cuff has some biologic healing left to go, which occurs gradually over the next six months to a year. This is why patients will sometimes feel that they are still improving even up to a year after surgery. If you have surgery with us, during this important healing process, you will see us in the office several times so that we can help advise you on your activity level and helpful exercises along the way. The most important advice I have for patients recovering from rotator cuff repair surgery is to let the tendon fully heal before being aggressive with the shoulder. As a shoulder specialist, I see patients who have not had ideal results after previous surgery elsewhere, and a common theme is that they advance their exercises too early during the slow tendon healing process. My favorite advice for my patients is, be conservative early so you can be aggressive later. The care of rotator cuff tears of the shoulder has advanced significantly over the last few decades. We now have a very effective spectrum of treatment options that give a high rate of clinical success. Consulting with a shoulder specialist and team can give you the information you need to make decisions about your or your family member's condition. To learn more about rotator cuff tears, please visit our website at www.western-ortho.com. Thank you.